Normalization. What is a database? First of all, before we talk about normalization, we have to discuss this. Well, a database is simply an organized way to store data. And you know that we're living in the information age. We have more information around us than ever before. And without databases, this would not be possible. They are the powerhouses behind the information age. They store, they manage, they retrieve information, and they contain tables. Lots of tables that store information or data about different entities. So why do we need a database when we've got spreadsheets? Spreadsheets are much easier to understand. We've used Excel for a long, long time. Why bother with databases? Well, databases are more powerful. They can store a lot more data and they're far more organized and you can manipulate the data in various ways. They really are a lot more powerful. A spreadsheet gets messy quite quickly. Yes, it is useful for doing calculations and accountants use them extensively but databases are far more powerful. The advantages are they can retrieve all the records that match certain criteria. They can update records in bulk. They can cross-reference records in different tables. And you can perform complex aggregate calculations. So all these reasons make a database very useful. First of all, let's talk about some terminology. So we've already said you get tables in databases. A table is a, a place where you can store the data about a certain topic or aspect or entity. In a table, you get fields, which are the columns. We also call them attributes. Um, and you also get the records, which are the rows. So we, can, we will talk about rows or records. Um, so each column is an attribute and each row is a single record. And an attribute can be something like somebody's name or somebody's age. Or here we have a table with position titles. It's obviously a table of different jobs in a company. The education requirements is a field. And each table must have a unique name. We have relationships between the tables. So, for example, we have a database with three tables, a customer's, products, and orders table. Now, each customer can be linked to an order or many orders in your orders table. And the orders table, in turn, will be linked to the products table. So you can see the relationships forming here between the tables. Another um, piece of terminology, the primary key. The primary key is a field which is chosen in a table and it's chosen so that it uniquely identifies each record in the table. It's usually underlined, like in the table below you will see that student ID is underlined. Now if this is a table of all the students at a university and the student ID number would be a good primary key because it would be unique and uniquely identify each student. Whereas if you use the student's first name or last name or both together, you could get two students with the same name. So you might not get a unique record by using those as the primary key. Student ID is far better. A composite key is a different type of primary key. Um, so a composite key is simply a primary key that's made up of two or more columns. It also uniquely identifies a record and the uniqueness is only guaranteed when the com columns are combined and not when taken at individually. This composite image is just there to make you think of the word composite. You can see they've combined a whole lot of pictures here to make a composite image. So. A composite key can also be called a compound key or a concatenated key. And here's an example. Say we have a book table. If we use the title on its own, that might not be unique. 
or if you use the author on its own, it might not be unique. Um, Shakespeare here has written two books, or you could get a title of a book that a few people wrote, but use the same title for their books. So the book is uniquely identified when you use the combination of author and title. And this is a composite key. A relation is just a way of presenting a table. So you can keep drawing pictures of the tables, but that's quite tedious. It's much better to have a simple notation, like here. You would put the table name, then you would put brackets, and put all the names of the fields in the brackets, and then you would underline the field which is the primary key. There's an example of the, a relation with the student table we saw earlier. So student table is the name of the table. Then in the brackets, student ID being the primary key, first name, last name, and course ID. Or example two, um, you have the book table, author and title are the composite key, so we've underlined both, and then the pages and the cost of the books. These are all different ways. These are relations which show how to present a table. A DBMS is, stands for Database Management System. And a database, we've said, it simply holds data. It allows you to make real use of the data. A DBMS gives you the ability to retrieve or add data. It creates reports. It enforces database, database rules and constraints. You will see more about that later. And without a DBMS, a database would just be a little collection of bits and bytes, and they would have no meaning. So you need the DBMS to be able to access the data and work with it. So coming back to this topic, normalization, that we was the name of this um, PowerPoint. So designing a database that will not have problems is what normalization aims at. We do not want problems within the database. And the problems could be you have duplicate data or you have unreliable data. And normalization will make sure that this does not happen. The process of normalization usually means that you will divide larger tables into smaller tables. And then you will link the tables using relationships. So press pause now. There are some questions. Think of a situation around you which has data which you could store in a table. Create an example table with a table name, at least four column names and three rows of data. Draw up the table on paper, as in the previous slides, and then show a row, an entity, an attribute, a record, a table and a column. Just like if you were labeling a science diagram. This will help you to remember all this terminology. And then draw up a relation for the table. Can a record be deleted as easily as an attribute? And why or why not? And then define the terms primary key and composite key. When you finish this, another question. Identify a primary key for the table below and write down any assumptions you make. So this table deals with a person charging to teach people how to parallel park. I know this is a topic that all your metrics are very concerned with. So a specific rate is charged depending on how difficult it is to park the, client, the car that the client drives. Note that some clients drive the same car and some clients have more than one car. Details about the client, the client's car, and the rate that will be charged are stored in one table, as shown in the example here. So your job is to find the primary key. And I will tell you in the next lecture which, what, what the answer was.